Hi there, it's Nikki Vershagen with another retail video. And today we're actually going to open up the discussion to an entire global retail panel. Because when you're looking at what's top of mind for retail IT, doesn't that depend on the particular geo that you're looking at? So our panel consists of four people. We have Brian Chung from APJ, Singapore. We have Edward Westenberg from Europe, the Netherlands. Amit Chethel from the United States. And Simarjit Singh from APJ, Australia. We brought these four experts together in order to better understand how some of these IT topics in retail manifest themselves in these respective regions. The discussion was chock full of good content, so this is part one of a series. So this video highlights some key takeaways around what digitizing physical brick and mortar spaces looks like in these different markets and different regions of the world. Let's see what our panel's perspectives, insights, and suggestions are on the topic. So thank you all for joining me today. Take your time out of your busy schedule, really appreciate it. Uh, what is one thing that we want retailers, or that maybe you would want retailers to know as they're looking to digitize the physical brick and mortar space that maybe retailers don't already know? Uh, if there's one thing that we would want to share with our customers is that uh, uh, Look at the data that your stores generate. It's about as much as your website generates. And guess what? If you look at that data and you have some data scientists for, that will work for you, they will start to answer questions that you didn't know you needed answering. And I think that's key. It's, it's this open mind approach to what's the data showing us. And it's showing us net new things mm -hmm. that people in the traditional lines of business may not be aware of. And I think there's lots of secrets to be uncovered, but that's, gonna, that's where we extract the value and we can help you do that. I think shopper data, shopper behavior data is a key to differentiation. Mm -hmm. right? When you think about, are you gonna try to win on price? Are you gonna try to win on product? But that's difficult. But if you can understand the data to work works best for your shopper, through all layers is key. So from social to mobile to video, even things like POS, converging all that mm -hmm. to get that 360 view what technology we have, I think, is a great differentiated strategy. So aligning with all those comments, I would say the brick and mortar stores, by nature, it's a platform in physical spaces. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, even we, after we enter this digital era, we always talk about the platform businesses and everything, right? What are the key, two key success factors in platform? If we may go back, it's all about the traffic, right? how to maximize the traffic on our platform and how to keep the traffic in the platform, right? So let's say, having said that, our brick and mortar spaces are platform. So many retailers typically have spent more time on how to maximize their traffic. Mm -hmm. So they want to improve their customer experiences in their brick and mortar spaces. But I would say it is time for them to spend more time on how to keep the traffic. They should focus more on how to optimize their backend operations using their platform as their assets. Asset. So having said that, I would say their physical spaces must be play a role as data gathering platform and they should not underestimate the value of their brick and mortar spaces as a data gathering platform. As Edward mentioned, there are abundant flow of data that they cannot even possibly know at this point of time that they can capture and derive the meaningful business insight out, out of it. All they have to do, I believe, is they have to set up a right infrastructures to capture those data, analyze it, utilize it, and find a ways to like uh, replicate it and scale it. So that, that's how they should they, they look at their brick and mortar spaces as a data gathering platform. Well yeah, yeah, well said. So kind of touching back on the concept of, you know, mobile is so big, there's all this information that customers are feeding to retailers, they're providing information based on shopping behavior, what they're really focused on purchasing, right? So with that, we know that the experience is big, omni-channel is huge. So frictionless retail, yeah. when a customer is actually interacting with the retail brand, you know, when they come into a store and they say hi, I think someone else mentioned this, that's not the first time they're interacting with the brand. You know, it's online, all different touch points. Yeah. So what would you guys say that frictionless retail looks like in your specific regions? You know, just to maybe start to think about that, Nikki, is 
the, where can you take friction out of from the minute you research about if you know for your retailer you're trying to buy a product mm -hmm. and how that purchase or delivery gets sent to the customer right where can you take friction out of that whole process so one big industry in retail within the US that we're seeing frictionless I think is quick service restaurant when quick service customers have no patience to wait for that product or service right and Starbucks they launched pre-order and pay years ago because they know consumers want their coffee they don't want to wait in the line they want to go directly to the handoff plane mm -hmm. taking friction out of that ordering process so with Cisco technology and with our partners like quasi and others you can take friction out of the ordering process to deliver that item anywhere any place and we see people increasing spend and we see delivery taking off because we've taken friction out of the ordering and, and delivery process. That's awesome. I love the examples and especially mm -hmm. we're trying to lower the barrier to entry for any yeah. kind of consumer that's going to yeah. be interacting with your yeah. brand. Anything you can do to make it easy for them, we're talking about convenience, it's so relevant. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, at APJ level what I have seen is that there are different countries, different retailers are trying different ways of doing frictionless things and they're all at different phases of maturity, mm -hmm. but it's still in the early trial process. And some uh, retailers are looking at it from a different perspective that is it only the sales cycle that they have to be frictionless or it's they should consider it more on the dwell time that the customers are standing in, in the restaurant and how to optimize that part. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's uh, it, it's different in APJ currently, it's all at, at different stages. Uh, speaking for EMER, uh, we see we see frictionless retail. I mean, like, like we're seeing here at NRF, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of uh, 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 booths actually uh, advertising frictionless payment, mm -hmm. and the frictionless payment solutions are absolutely, you know, they're, so they're, they're, they're given, they're coming. Uh, the question is, is how do you embed that into existing process, like mm -hmm. you just said, so that it actually becomes, you know, taking away the friction throughout the process, mm -hmm. not just the payment part. Although the payment is very important, mm -hmm. um, and and we're seeing lots of. Uh, uh, pilots going on, uh, several of which I actually believe may not be very scalable just due to, due to the nature that's being set up. And so then it becomes more of a more of a marketing uh, effort rather than an actual committed effort to change business process. And, uh, and, and so I think it's, it's just a phase that we're going through. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, we've seen the whole facial recognition uh, part that Cisco is actually bringing to bear uh, in our DevNet environment, which is really, really cool. So, you know, this, this, is, this is a space to watch and pay attention, but keep redesigning the process first before you actually apply the technology. Um, I need to bring up this concept of always connected mobile shoppers. I'm sure this, the customer trends, not only in APJC, but all over the world, right? So these customers, including myself, it's really funny because they're always connected. They get all those informations from the brand, from the retailer, from the services product they buy. It's so easy for them to get those information. It is so easy for them to get connected, right? Even a social like a network platforms. So the, in terms of business processes for the retail operators, how to address these always on connected needs should be the essence of their business processes, but as Edward mentioned, it is almost impossible to redesign their business processes on a daily daily basis mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they simply cannot. Right. So that's how this you know tech, all the technologies comes in and automate the process to communicate with always on you know connected mobile shoppers in an effective way. Mm -hmm. So I think I think this links to the other technologies, which we will cover later in the session. <laughs> but I think mm -hmm. this should be the essence of the frictionless retail operations, how to address always on connected mobile shoppers in an effective way. Great. So we've heard about the value of customer insights that can be generated within a physical brick and mortar store, and that we should view a physical store as a data gathering platform. Brian's last point about mobile shoppers and the technologies that are quickly capturing and maintaining the attention of retail IT departments is the perfect transition to our next video, which is about retail IT innovation and the trends that are quickly taking shape. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you stay tuned so you can catch part two of this global retail panel discussion.